Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Pyatt and welcome to my YouTube channel. My goal is to help as many martial artists in their journey and study of Bujutsu, whether you are a complete beginner or an experienced practitioner. This week we're going to look at a video looking at applications of lower block, um, which in Japanese is commonly referred to under two common names, either Gedanbarai or Gedanuke. Barai comes from the word harai, which means to sweep, um, or can also sometimes be translated loosely as parry, but sweep is probably more appropriate. And uke, we usually translate to being block, but of course it's to receive. It doesn't really matter which one you use, gedan barai or gedan uke is largely considered to be roughly the same technique, which is that you start from the shoulder and sweep the arm down to roughly about a fist away from the knee, right? and then you have shinan barai, which is a little bit higher. Um, some systems have these two as two distinct techniques. Um, we do actually have a difference between gedan barai and gedan uke, but for the purpose of this, it's irrelevant. So we're going to look at how it can be used as an application for an arm lock. Uh, and have a look at some of the principles that make this work and what makes it successful. Um, because one of the comments that I hear most when I see people doing uh, arm locks, particularly more so in karate as opposed to jiu-jitsu, because typically jiu-jitsu people have a, a slightly more sound understanding of the applications of joint locks, is that um, you know some people it just doesn't work on, some people are too strong, and, and, and the, the issue with the technique is that people don't recognise the fact that actually the technique enables the lock to come on and that you shouldn't actually be using that much strength or effort even on a much stronger opponent. So we'll look at how that works. So, I've got a mic. Um, we'll start this in a wrist grab, first of all, because uh, that's the way that I usually first uh, teach it. So um, we usually look, first of all, at the wrist grab coming up, rotating and pulling back to get a stretch on the arm. Then the hand comes up, so with your get on right, you usually start here in the shoulder and then come down. So we come here, we come up, and then I want to ten can, turn, and I get my lower block as, uh, as, my, as my arm up into there. Now, let's just look at the, the micro details of this, because most people are familiar with the idea of taking the arm and just pressing down, right? But it shouldn't be just a press down, right? It, if your opponent's strong, that won't happen. So if my opponent resists and I get to here and I just push, right? It just becomes a battle of strength. So what I need to do is a couple of really important things. So the first thing is my opponent can't be on balance. If he is, he has an advantage. So I need this. I need kazushi. So kazushi is to break balance. So when I do whatever version of this technique I do, there should always be a small pull and an extension to bring my opponent's weight into the balls of those feet. If I try to do any lock whilst my opponent is on balance, he can be strong and he can lock his body and become rigid. Whilst he's off balance, it's next to impossible for him to remain strong. Even if he remains rigid, his body will still topple. So the idea of kazushi is really important. So you need that really gentle pull. So whenever you get to a point where you have an opponent that's really strong, and you're thinking, the arm lock just isn't working, I can't push him over, I can't do anything. First thing you must always remember is pull. Okay, start that movement. And you want to unify that with your hips. So you shouldn't just be your hands pulling. Your hips and your body should come that's one. Now the next thing, on the other side, is we do as a punch this time. So when I'm here, if I want to just do uh, as a break from here, this hand wants to rotate. So if we just come a little closer. So when we actually do the inset of the arm, you don't want to do it on the point of the elbow. You want to make sure that the inside of your arm, as a loose reference, goes on the point of the elbow. So that when I rotate my arm, it is just past the elbow here that I'm attacking. Because it's, in terms of leverage, that point is more effective to break the arm. I'm not saying that if you hit this point hard enough it won't work, but this point here will be more effective if you're trying to do it relaxed and you're trying to do it slowly. So when you do the pull, first of all you want your opponent here, so you want that sort of stretch. The next step is that this arm must cut and must soar. It needs to rotate. And the reason for this is because by rotating, when I'm applying force to my opponent's arm, the rotation is constantly changing the direction of the force, which means my opponent can't fix to resist it. So a really simple example, if Mike puts his arm out just nice and straight, right, and I push down if he resists, that's easy, right? If all of a sudden I come off and Mike resists, and then I go this way, he struggles. Same thing if Mike resists, and then Mike resists. You can't resist in two directions at the same time. Your body just doesn't work that way. So by rotating, I'm changing the direction I'm placing the force. So if he's rigid and I'm just pressing in one place, you can resist that. If, however, I change my angle of attack, you see what happens to the head. Turn 
in there. So the punch comes, so you see the head comes forward, and that's really important. So you need the pull and you need the rotation. So if we go back to the original basic version, so from here I have this pull with my hip. It's not just my hand, because my hand will let me down, it's my body, so it's the step that we have. So we come and we turn into the lower block. So we get to that point and we lock into place. And we'll back to here. Of course, from now I can do whatever I want. So I can come with my kick, I can sweep, although usually if you're taking your opponent forward, you don't bring them backwards. Now, looking at other versions, so I can come up from a punch. So if the punch comes, I just want to slip and get to the outside. If I'm here, I can hit, I can do all this, but then I want to come down the same. It doesn't matter whether I have a foe fist or whether I have an open hand. As long as I have the pull and the rotation, the technique will work. A couple of other little points. When we do lower lock, uh, the arm finishes by coming in this direction. So if I do this really slowly, I'll go back to the wrist grab. So I have the pull, I have the turn. I start by pulling this way, and as I do the lock, because my opponent starts to move that way, I turn the pressure back into it. And you see that forces Mike's feet back at the end. So if I do that quick, my opponent goes one way into the lock, and then the two forces meet. So don't do that quickly unless your opponent is expecting it and is reasonably conditioned arms. Now, the other point is I've been doing all along, but might not seem obvious, is that when you actually execute the lock, I don't want to stay here for a couple of reasons. If it goes wrong, he's going to smack me. Right? And number two, by taking a 90 degree angle to the arm, I get better leverage, so I can bring this down. So the back foot, however you do it, wants to come round to 90 degrees, and that leaves me open for whatever kind of finishing technique I want to do. Right? Uh, another nice option is to consider it when you do it from a front kick snap punch. So obviously if you've got a multiple attacks as opposed to a single one, just make sure you cover. A bad example would be this, so if the front kick comes and I do that and leave myself open. So as the front kick comes, keep my action in and then just down. So make sure the front foot, as the kick comes, just gets out of the way. That's my end. So my feet are coming back and I'm covering and then I'm off. So then I've got my break and I can just here, which then almost becomes inner block. But I want to make sure that I'm going to finish them off. So I bring it down at the end. So then a couple of other things we can think about. We'll do it in the front kick snap punch attack. So one, two, here. When I get to this point, how do I want to take him down? So there's a couple of ways I can take him down. One of the easiest ones is to bring him out. So I want to, again, pull Kazushi and apply pressure on the elbow and pop out into his third point and just bring him down. And the simplest finish is to put my knee into the elbow to finish. There are dozens of finishing techniques you can do from here. Putting the hand, uh, hand on the uh, foot, dropping the knee in, applying pressure, shoulder locks, arm locks, wrist locks, finger locks, you know, key locks, you know, whatever kind of lock you want. So lots of techniques you can do from there, but the simplest one is to drag him away. Of course, you don't need to take him down at all, so probably it's that approach. So we're here, I can just choose to open, bring the knee, follow through the strike, follow through an elbow. Simple enough. Now, another thing to consider is what happens if, what happens if he stands up? So, same thing, I've got it wrong, maybe I've slipped, he comes up, maybe he wants to throw that punch. That's one of his most likely options that he's going to come up and try and smack me. So, it's easy for me to feel. So if I get to here and it's gone wrong and he comes up, move. And then shift and enter into Osa Takeru. Don't stand still. One more time. So just shift as quick as you can. Um, other options. So one is that as he stands up, I can use that momentum against him. So which I can use in the cockpit ASC. So he's a kick and comes. One, I bring him down. As he comes back up, turn back into cockpit If he stands up, I can use his momentum. Even if he doesn't, it doesn't matter because I can bring him down and then just rotate. Don't move for a second rotate back, so as his body's going that way, the wrist is going this way, so I get increased the likelihood of getting the break. But for training, we work together. So we take him down, he goes to stand up, I transition, turn, and then again I can finish however I want, however I do in my dojo normally. 
just a couple of points when you're doing the overall technique. So first of all, the footwork with the front kick, keep my ash, I want to think of my feet cutting. So as the front kick comes in, that's sort of my ultimate goal. But I cover at the same time. I don't drop my head, because I've already said the punch is available. So I'm here, and I'm covering the centre line. And then coming in. Just one more time, faster. So I'm there. I've also got the ankle at the end. So this is my backup. Maybe it goes wrong here. So then I need the ankle. The other option is that I can go forward and just come round. So because I've got that trap, I have backups. Another final point. When I come to here, so I've got the actual arm lock and hopefully I've broke it. When you practice the technique where he tries to stand back up again, what you want to try and do is to create smoothness. So try with whatever technique you do, as he starts, do it slowly first, as he comes up, start to make sure that your technique blends with his rise. What you try and want to avoid is that he stands up and then you've got like a jerky movement afterwards. Because if you do that, he will have too much time and he's going to hit me. So what he wants to do is to stand straight up and hit me. So I need to move straight away into my next technique, whether it's wrist lock or whether, one final time, it is Yoso Tagaro. So if I come here and stand, enter. You see, once you've got the Kazushi, you don't need a foot sweep. So I can do it as a demon out here. So your options are endless, and that's really what I'd love you guys to sort of have a go at playing with. What are the options? But just think about, with the lower block, the details that make it work, which is the Kazushi to break his balance just a little bit by leading him forward and making sure that you have the rotation of the saw of the arm. Um, one other little point, just a small point to mention, which is that if your opponent's strong and their hand is in front of their elbow, if you imagine it was a plane here and this is there, you may struggle to do the version where you ten count, where you come round. Because if my opponent's very rigid here, I won't get this back far enough to affect this lock. Which if that happens, don't fight it, roll it. So instead what I'm going to do is bring the elbow forward so that the hand is now behind the elbow and then the technique will work in exactly the same way. So, hopefully that video was useful and helpful to you. Um, we do videos every Friday, so if you like this video and enjoyed it, then don't forget to subscribe, which you can do by clicking the button in the bottom right hand corner. And you can check out more of our videos uh, that we've done by clicking the two links here. So hopefully, see you in the comments below guys, and see you next week.